Hey guys, welcome to another video from Me News Creation Channel. So probably you are already a user for the Bricklink Studio 2.0 modeling software. Then you may aware that in this software, you it has the capability to export three different type of outputs for your creations. Um, the first one is the photo real time. The second one is the POV ray, and the third one is the animations. So in this video, I would like to focus to talk about the settings that you need to export the animations in this software. Because I realized that um, for the animations output, it has a lot of settings that you need to set before you have the outcome. So for instance, um, under the quality sessions, you can choose the different frame rate or the, the durations. Under the effect sessions, you can choose the building sequence. The step is either auto-generated or user-defined and also the brick falling down effects and how does it look like if the uh, model is revolving and what is the speed that you need to set uh, and so on. So uh, that is more than what I will cover today because um, I will just share with you those settings that I feel is most of us will be using. For instance, like the camera setup and also the lighting, maybe not so much people will do the adjustment. So I didn't cover that portion in this um, video. So by the end of this video, you will able to know that what is the input that you need for the animation settings and then what is the, uh, what is the expected output that you can get from this um, input settings. So um, without any further delay, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so from here you can see that there are eight different settings that I would like to talk about today. Uh, for the first one is the frame rate, second is the building sequence, and then to the steps, the falling effect, um, the revolving effect, and also the speed that you need to set, and also what is the uh, rendering difference between the CPU and the GPU. Also what will be the outcome for the start logo and also what is the impact for the total durations that you set in the animation settings. So let's get started for the first one which is the frame rate. So on the screen you can see that at the top left is the 24 frame per second output and the top right is 30 frame per second and the bottom left is the 60 frame per second output. Uh, so you also notice that if uh, this is a stagnant model, meaning to say that the model is not revolving or it's not moving. So if the model is not moving or it is stagnant, we are hardly to see any differences within within these all three um, settings. But then you may take a look on the rendering time that it needs to render the output files for these different settings. So um, this rendering time is actually um, based on my machine's capability, based on the processors and also the hardware that I use. So this may not apply to you because it will be very, for uh, it will be very depending on the how how hardware or the machines that you use to render, uh, the the model. Okay. So for instance, um, for this example that I use, for the twenty four frame per second, it took my machines about one hundred and twenty minutes to render. Whereby for the 30 frame per second, it took about 20, uh, 223 minutes and for the 60 frame per second, it took uh, 579 minutes to render. So yeah, you can see that when we changing the frame rate to a higher frame rate, so the time it required is much more higher. So for 24, we change to 30, it took more than about double of time that we need to use to render it. Okay. so. Let's take a look on how it, how does it looks like if we have a revolving uh, model. So over here you can see that um, this is another example where the model is um, revolving which is moving and also together with the falling effect. So for the details about the falling effect, I will explain it on the later. This is just an example to compare in between different frame rate. Okay, so again, uh, the top left is the 24 and the top right is the 30 and the bottom left is the 60 frame per second frame rate. So uh, if you pay a little bit more attention, you may notice that the uh, 60 frame per second tends to have a smoother transitions or changes. So, but of course, it's not say that the 24 or 30 is not good. Just that if you're putting it all side by side, then only you will see a slight difference in between three of them. 
So again, we can take a look on the rendering time that we need um, to render these three uh, different settings. So for the 24 frame per second, it took about 196 minutes. For the 30 frame per second, it took about 246. And for the 60 frame per second, it took about 496 minutes to render it. So basically, um, if you would like me to suggest, I will say that uh, the 24 frame per second may serve the purpose because if you don't put the two different settings side by side, I think it will be it will very hard. It will hardly to be noticed the differences. So meaning to say that if I give you one output or one result or one exported file, you I, I couldn't tell what frame per second you are using. So as long as the the changes or the revolving speed is good or the output is good, then I will say it's good enough to use it. So for me, I personally will use the um, twenty four frame per seconds. Uh, because it saves a lot of time and also the transition of or the smoothness on of the animations is not that bad it's it's actually quite good okay i would say yeah so that's all uh for the first frame rate um, comparison let's move on to the second one okay so for the second one we will talk about the building sequence is either turned on or turned off so basically you can see that um, the left hand side is turned on and the right hand side is turned off so for the turn off basically it's just a stagnant image or still images whereby it didn't make it didn't it doesn't have any changes so for the building sequence if you turn it on it will build it step by step like you see on the uh, on the left hand side okay so um uh, one thing i feel funny is that uh why the building sequences is turned off but the rendering time is about double when it's turned on so I guess it's because uh, when you have the uh, building sequences, so for the first image, you have only one uh, bricks. So it just render one bricks, it took um, more uh, faster. So compared to the uh, building sequences, when you turn off, the first uh, images it already have the full model. So that's why um, it took much longer even though your building sequences is turned off okay so yeah basically if you want to have the building sequences you can just basically turn it on to see it so okay let's move on to the next one okay if you take a look on the uh bricklink studio 2.0 rendering um, output or the settings under the animations you may notice that under the uh, effects sections the there is a building sequences that we just talked about whether you can turn on and off Underneath the building sequence, you can see the steps got two options. One is the auto generated, another one is the user defined. So if your building sequences is turned off, then these steps, uh, options or settings will be irrelevant. So for here, we will choose to turn on because we want to see what is the differences in between these two. So on the screen, you can see that on the left hand side is auto generated steps whereby the right hand side is the user defined step which means that the user defined is defined by me and also defined by you okay so you can notice that the differences in between these two is that uh, when we turn on or we choose the auto generated um, steps basically the steps will be defined by the studio 2.0 software so what i noticed is that it always started uh, it always generated from the bottom of the model. So you can see that this little train it always start at the bottom and then it build up to the top. Whereby for the user define uh, because when we um, when we settings or defining the step basically we are settings or are creating it for the instructions book. So you can see that one steps um, that we that we define will be more than two or three bits um, for for each step. So maybe um, the building effects or the step-by-step -step sequences to build up this entire model is not that good compared to the auto-generated. So I would say that if you uh, would like to have a very cool animations to see how your um, creations to build from zero to 100, then you should use the uh, auto-generated because uh, it also saves you a lot of time. You don't need to define it uh, in advance. So uh, basically, you just build your model and when it's done, you just turn on this in the settings, which is the auto-generated under the steps. 
then you can have this um, starting uh, you then you have then you can have this building sequences that can start from the um, zero to finish okay so again uh, you can compare on the rendering time in between these two um, settings for the auto generated it took about 120 minutes and for the user defined it took about um, 199 minutes so I think the um, rendering time for the user defined it depends on how many bricks uh, that you choose for each steps so yeah so basically this is um, very for different steps and different model okay so um, nothing much I will share for this then move on to the point number four so in point number four, we talk about the falling effect here. So uh, on the previous point, we have slightly touched about the falling effect. So right here, we talk a little bit more details on this. So at the left hand side, obviously the falling effect is turned off, whereby the right hand side, the falling effect is turned on. Basically, the falling effect is the effect of the bricks is falling down from the sky to the ground. So yeah, uh, it will very depends on what is the um, animations output that you require or what you're expecting you would like you, you, if you would like to have a more fancy animations of course you can choose the falling effects turn on so you can see that uh, your model is uh, is that it looks like it built from the sky to the ground something like that okay yeah but the drawback you can see that is the rendering time so when we turn off the falling effect it took us 120 minutes to render on my machines so it also depends on your machines again and then if the falling effects is turned on for my case it took about 345 minutes to render which is about 188 percent more than what it should be so yeah uh, there's a drawback so if you like to have a more fancy appearance or more nicer animations then you can always offer the falling effect Actually, it's also very depending on your taste. So if you like, if you don't like the falling effects and you feel dizzy to looking at it, for somebody, then yeah, you can choose to turn off the falling effect. So basically, this is just what it's about. Okay, then we move on to the point number five. So in this point number five, we will talk about the revolving options, either turn on or off, and also the speed. Per turn what is the effect looks like if you're changing the time per turn so in this uh, in this video I will show you four different examples which is one second per turn two second per turn four second per turn and also eight second per turn so you may notice that at the top left which is the one second per turn the model took just one second to make one turn okay whereby for the um, bottom left uh, it took two second per turn and so on so you may notice that uh, for the one second per turn it looks so funny because it turns so fast uh, it fast until maybe the, the the viewer couldn't see the details on it so after i have um, tried out this just these four different options uh, for me personally i like the output or the appearance for the eight seconds per turn because you can see that for the eight seconds per turn um, output uh, when the uh, model is sl slowly building up the turn is also match it up quite nicely meaning to say that when the model is turning the speed is also matching to the speed that the bricks falling from the sky okay so um, you can also compare the rendering time in between the uh, revolving speed one two four and eight seconds per turn so uh, more or less it, it did it so yeah the conclusions for the these four different um, setting is that uh, the variance is in between five percent so um, nevertheless regardless um, which uh, seconds per turn that you're choosing uh, in, bit, uh, in these four options so uh, the rendering time doesn't uh, vary that much so I'm not sure what if the rendering time it will talk if we have the um, 20 seconds or 100 seconds per turn looks like so probably if you have a chance to try it so you you may um, share it with us and put in the comment under the uh, comment column in below okay then uh, yeah that's that's uh, that's all I would like to talk about in these settings so we move to the um, the next one which is the point number six 
Okay, so for point number six, uh, we are basically comparing between the uh, options for the GPU or the CPU selections under the device sections. So meaning to say that you would like to get the software, the Studio 2.0 software to render your model by using the CPU power or using the GPU power. So if you have the luxury, have the GPU cards on your machines, then I will always recommend use to use the GPU because you can see that the effect basically we didn't see that much of difference. Maybe basically it just didn't have any differences. What will be the differences is the rendering time that you took. Okay, so for my machines, uh, if I turn on or I choose the GPU, it took me about 120 minutes to render these small models. Whereby, um, if I choose the CPU's um, render options, it took about 820 minutes just to render this small model. So, which is about six times more uh, times taken if I choose the CPU's options. So, of course, um, if you don't have the GPU options, then you would you just only left one options to go for. So yeah, so in this in this point on this section, I just would like to show you the comparison. What is the rendering time differences in between the CPU rendering and also the GPU rendering? Okay, now we move on to the next point, which is comparing to the start logo whether turn on or off. So for me, if you are exporting or creating the animation, uh, the start logo seems that is um, negligible because you, when you have a moving model or moving animations, you hardly see the start logo on the start of the bricks. So basically, this uh, start logos options is more for a uh, still photos. If you have a very close up of your creation of your model, then you can have the start logos turned on because it looks more nicer and more realistic. So um, again, if we turn off the uh, start logos, I, I, I'm not sure why it took uh, slightly longer than I turn on the start logo. But yeah, I, I don't have the answer for this. So um, for me, if you I'm rendering or creating the animations, probably I will turn the start logo off. Okay, because yeah, again, like I say, it didn't able to be seen and also it takes a um, longer time. It looks like it didn't have um, any benefits to us. Yeah, okay. So um, that's, for, that's all for this one. So we move again to the last point. At the final point or the eighth point, I would like to talk about the total durations. So if you notice that under the uh, animations quality sections, there's a total durations output. Uh, that you can choose. So for instance, for this example, I choose to use um, total duration of 10 seconds and also 20 seconds. So meaning to say that I would like to have an animation of 10 seconds of time. Okay. One thing I would like to highlight here is that under the effect sections, you can see that there's also a duration settings. Basically, it's actually a bar. And this bar is actually um, split to two different portions. First portion is the sequence and the second portion is the completed. So what is this actually means? So it means that if let's say we took the 10 seconds of total duration as an example, meaning to say that uh, this uh, output, it will speed the entire 10 seconds of the animations into two portions. So the first portion is the sequence portion. The sequence portion, it means that how long it uh, you would like it to be animated to build from the zero to the completed. So if let's say you would like to have a sequence of 8 seconds, then the animations will show from the zero to 8 seconds to be completed, whereby the remaining 2 seconds is the completed versions. So let's say again, you would like to, if you choose the sequence for 5 seconds, meaning to say that uh, for your uh, animation, which is total of 10 seconds, uh, for the first five seconds, it will build up from uh, zero to uh, hundred percent within the first five seconds, whereby the remaining five seconds is actually the completed hundred percent. It, it didn't have any uh, progressive in, uh, in, in increasing. Okay, so uh, for me, I choose the uh, eighty to twenty percent of ratio, meaning to say that for the entire of durations, I took the first eighty percent is the building sequence. 
So the remaining 20% is the completed versions just to see, uh, to give an overview how is the model looks like for the remaining 20% of the animation's time. So um, yeah, so in this ex uh, for this uh, on the screen you can see that at the left hand side is the um, 10 seconds output, and the on the right hand side is 20 seconds output. So yeah, so you can see that for the 20 second basically. If I apply the 80 or 20 percent rules, so meaning to say that it took about 16 seconds to build up. So you can see the uh, building sequence for the duration of 20 seconds is built up very slowly until the end at the uh, 16 seconds, and then the remaining four seconds basically is just revolving for the completed model to see the overall view of your model. Yeah. So again, uh, for the uh, rendering time is. It seems like it will just um two x of your uh, existing uh, time. What I mean is that you will have a duration of ten second. It took about hundred and twenty seconds, uh, hundred and twenty minutes to be rendered. So I double the uh, duration time to twenty seconds, but then the rendering time it will took about two x more than that. Meaning to say that, so I have hundred and twenty minutes to render the ten seconds uh, animations. It took about almost um. 370 minutes to render the 20 seconds uh, animations durations. Yep. So basically this is uh, what I would like to share with you. Uh, how you would like to play around is up to you because uh, everyone have their own preference including the 80 or 20 percent of the rules that I just said. So yeah this very depending on what you want. Um, yeah that's all I want to share for this. Okay, so comes to an end to this video. So that's all the things that I would like to share with you uh, for how you can set the settings for the animations output for the uh, Breaking Studio 2.0. So uh, if you have any comment or if you have any experience would like to share with me or share with the community, feel free to drop your comment under the comment column below. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, feel free to click the subscribe button. So until then, I will see you on the next video. Thank you.